As North Korea ramped up its provocations to unprecedented levels, it also got busy domestically focusing on post-COVID economy and new defense goals. This as the U.S. reaffirmed its commitment to boost extended deterrence to South Korea. On today's GMS Focus, we take a look at the latest news out of North Korea making headlines and their implications. We're joined by Dr. Pong Young-shik at Yonsei Institute of North Korean Studies. Good morning, Dr. Pong. Uh, Good morning. (laughs) Let's jump into some of these major headlines coming out of North Korea. Uh, As I preluded to in my opening today, North Korea is set to hold the Supreme People's Assembly today. This is where major announcements have been made in the past, namely in 2019, where Kim Jong-un expressed his will to hold a third North Korea-U.S. summit. Last year, Kim declared the state's new nuclear policy. So what kind of message is actually expected out of Kim Jong-un this year at the Supreme People's Assembly? Well, um, you have to first understand why North Korea has so many meetings, assemblies, <laughs> plenary sessions, you know, you must have lost counting, right? Yeah. Uh, those meetings. It is because the system is um, based upon one party leadership. Uh, uh, you know, Korean Workers Party is the center of the state system led by the Socialist Party. Uh, so the Central Committee is like uh, our administrative branch of the government, you know, setting up important policies. And the policies or national budget must be approved by the representative of a common people. That is the uh, the uh, Supreme uh, People's Assembly that is going to take place. So once the, uh, the budget and major policy decisions will be approved by the Supreme People's Assembly, then they will be implemented as actual laws. Mm. Problem uh, is that Despite all these, uh, you know, meetings and the uh, major decisions, uh, there is no bright light uh, for Kim Jong leadership to escape from diplomatic isolation and uh, chronic poverty. Uh, what is uh, blatantly missing in the series of announcements made uh, out of the plenary sessions ahead of this uh, Supreme People's Assembly is no specific mentioning of the failure of economy last year, 2022. But the plenary session simply set very uh, ambitious goals like uh, coal production, you know, agricultural revolution and whatnot. But North Korean people are very well aware of the dire situations on the ground. Mm. So uh, Kim Jong-un's address is not going to admit uh, the failure of the economic system, but rather double down the development of nuclear weapons so that uh, regime may be hoping to continuously divert people's frustration and anger at the uh, uh, incompetent uh, the leadership away. Uh, I mean, the thing is, even under North Korea's a stringent set of rules of clearly uh, dominating media with their rhetoric only, and there is really no op-ed or anyone to hold uh, the supreme leader accountable. But frustrations can grow on the ground, as you've said. The North Korean people are very well aware. Uh, I wonder if there is eventually a tipping point, but maybe uh, we'll save that question for another day. I, I want to talk a little bit about South Korea's bold initiative as well. Mm-hmm. The unification minister in the country, Kwon Yong-se, has renewed his vow to do all he can to resume dialogue with North Korea, even if the North is not interested. He said the government's bold initiative will eventually help in re-engaging the North in nuclear talks. This is all in the meanwhile, President Yoon is expected to ask for global support at the World Economic Forum this week. How do you assess the validity of it at this point in time? Uh, what do you mean by the validity of the Mr. Kwon Young says uh, reiteration <laughs> of the bold initiative in terms of the possibility or the, um, you know, in terms of uh, policy, mm. you know, just and the correct policy choice of the Yoon Song Yeon government. Can I go with the former? <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, then uh, it's a very close to neg- negative 0%. <laughs> because it's not the fault of the Yoon Song Yeon government or the Minister of Kwon Yong Se mm. with a very poor proposal. Mm. But it is the uh, absolute denial and rejection by the Kim Jong leadership of North Korea mm. to engage in any type of uh, relationship with outside world, especially inter-Korean economic cooperation. Mm. Because opening up is suicidal to Kim Jong-un leadership, having suffered from many years of absolute failure of economy. Um, one thing that, that is very uh, eye-opening uh, from the plenary session of the Korean Workers' Party uh, held uh, la- last month, 2022, is that the legalization of the 
cultural cultured language in Pyongyang, mm. meaning that it will be prohibited uh, to use any type of uh, uh, language or expressions similar to the South Korean ways that are observed in the K dramas or you know Korean pop songs, and uh, the central government uh, has decided to establish central prosecutors. Office to punish uh, those who are deviated from party's teachings and the indoctrination. That means that the regime is extremely anxious about spread of the anti-systematic ideologies mm. and uh, cynicism among North Korean people, even in the central city of North Korea, Pyongyang. So. Uh, it will be suicidal for the regime to engage in inter-Korean economic uh, relations, and then people will open their eyes to the superiority of the South Korean system mm. and uh, experience even more uh, South Korean culture and uh, you know economic practices. Then they will cast even stronger doubt and suspicion and distrust to the Kim Jong Un leadership. Mm. So even though from the point of, viewpoint of rationality. North Korean regime has every incentives to accept economic assistance from the outside. From the point of the political survival of the regime, mm. opening up is suicidal. So audacious plan of the Yoon Yeol government will not be accepted by North Korea. It's a difficult proposition in the first place. Mm. If it is not such a difficult task, it is not supposed to even be called audacious plan. It is supposed to be called the easy plan. <laughs> so because it, it would bring the question of the survival of the regime, which seems to be the central focus of North Korea, well, Kim Jong-un. That's why the bold initiative would not necessarily have uh, some grounds. And that's not necessarily the UN administration's fault, nor... No, no. Nor... But the task is high. Okay. I think that that paints a more clear picture for us, a more realistic expectation, too. Uh, I also want to talk about these images that were made public by the United Nations Command. Of course, whenever new pictures surface, I question also the timing of it all. The UN Command has uploaded several photos from the Korean War that broke uh, out, of course, in the 1950s. It shows the U.S. forces bombing Pyongyang. The photos are provided by the U.S. Air Force. Now, while some pundits say that this was aimed at reaffirming Washington's commitment to defend South Korea, how do you view the timing of the pictures and the images itself? The best, the best way to confirm the veracity of this report and analysis is to ask the questions to the United Nations you know, command. But I mean, there is a great deal of a coincidence uh, involving in the disclosure of these old pictures mm. of the air bombing of the U.S. forces on the capital city Pyongyang and the Shinjiu uh, during the Korean War. Um, we can apply our own perspectives on this, and we can also apply North Korea's own perspectives on the disclosure and the uh, in exhibition of these photographs. Because from our standpoint, this is just another, you know, remembrance of the Korean War and the U.S. involvement uh, in order to assist South Korea in the Korean War. So you can make an interpretation that oh, this is uh, another way to uh, confirm the. Uh, full commitment of the United States for the protection of South Korea in terms of extended uh, deterrence. But from the North Korean perspective, this is just a horror, mm. horror of the past, that the North Korea is no match to the air force of the United States, uh, especially in alliance with the uh, armed forces of South Korea. So if there has been any um, intention involving this uh, a demonstration of the older photographs of the Korean War, then mm. uh, it might have the multiple purposes, not just one. Mm. Uh, in a perhaps related question, then how do you assess Washington's extended deterrence to South Korea? I know we've asked you similar questions before, but it, the question still remains. I mean, how much is U.S. willing to protect South Korea, even at the cost of maybe placing itself at serious risk? Well, uh, Washington has iterated many times over uh, that there is no question uh, related to the full commitment of the United States uh, to provide nuclear extended deterrence uh, to South Korea, uh, which is not only confined to conventional weapon systems, but including as well uh, nuclear weapons. But the test of a uh, taste of pudding in its eating. So 
Uh, there will be always a uh, people on both sides of the Pacific uh, casting doubt on the, you know, uh, credibility of such a, a U.S. policy uh, for South Korea. Mm. That is the reason why some in South Korean society have been arguing that the promise of the nuclear extended deterrence by the United States is lacking. So South Korea has to develop and possess its own nuclear weapons in order to cope with North Korea armed with the nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. Or at least the United States has to reintroduce its uh, tactical nuclear weapons uh, to South Korea. But Biden administration has been very firm uh, in that the uh, you know, standing uh, policy of the nuclear extended deterrence of the United States for South Korea is sufficient. Mm -hmm. And it, it has been kind of a political mistake um, by the President Yoon Song yeol uh, to exaggerate uh, the current uh, security uh, cooperation uh, between the United States and South Korea by alluding as if there is a legitimate chance for the United States to share the control over its nuclear strategic assets with South Korea, or there is a legitimate chance for South Korea to actually develop its own nuclear weapons. Uh, both claims have been very gently uh, denied mm. by Washington. Uh, Washington has been only uh, confirming that uh, denuclearization of the entire uh, Korean Peninsula mm. is the common goal uh, for South Korea and the United States. Mm -hmm. So think about it. If the goal is a denuclearization of not just North Korea, but entire Korean Peninsula, that also includes South Korea free from nuclear weapons of any sort. Mm -hmm. So President Yoon Song yeol I think, meant well. Mm -hmm. He wanted to alleviate the concern and anxiety of South Korean people about such a dangerously escalating military tension on the Korean Peninsula mm. uh, initiated by North Korea's provocation and their doubts on South Korea's capacity to deal with the threats of North Korea armed with missiles and nuclear warheads. Mm. But, but he made an unfounded and exaggerated claim that only uh, worsened the fear and anxiety among <laughs> South Korean public. So the intent is clear or maybe well intended. I'm, I'm willing to give him that. Yeah. I'm willing to give him that. <laughs> but honesty is the best policy, especially if government wants to get trust from the public. Oh, that's actually a really important point. How do you gain the trust of the public? The presidential office has still, since then tried to clarify President Yoon's claims. And he meant well. Right. He meant well. <laughs> I give him that. All right. Uh, with that, we move on to our final question of the day. Uh, elite defector turned lawmaker Taeyong Oh says that Kim Jong-un has recently replaced a majority of top military officials appointed just six months ago. I wonder, does this hint at some instability in Kim's policies and his regime? Uh, what do you make of this? Well, I'm inclined to agree with uh, uh, Mr. Taeyong was analysis of the current situations inside Pyongyang, okay. that it is not a, a small thing that Kim Jong-un uh, expressed no trust uh, toward the people surrounding him, including the alleged purge of the former foreign minister, uh, Yi Yong-ho. Um, so, uh, what the kind of signal uh, is being sent to people surrounding Kim Jong-un and Kim Yo-jong, then the leadership is not going to protect them, despite their uh, undying loyalty to the state and the leadership. Then people will be moving slowly away uh, from the leadership, because uh, if leadership is not going to protect them, then what's the point of giving the leadership the ultimate loyalty? Mm -hmm. So, that means there are a lot of... Uh, cracks uh, you know, ma being made inside North Korea's uh, inner system. Thank you very much, Dr. Bong, for today's insights. We'll speak to you again soon. Definitely. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.